Leo. Oof. Hello, hello. Uh, I'm just loading up the project, so give me a minute. Be. Do we got the Oz, everyone? Who we got today? Wow. All right. Taking, uh, sure, it's taking a while. Is it just me or does Unreal 427 takes a much longer time to load up than the others? Because that's what's happening right now. Hey, it looks like we got it. Maybe. <laughs> well, anyway. Oh, there it goes. So. Hello. What's up? All right. So, day two of the Genshin Impact Remake stream. Um, did not have as much time to uh, prepare today because I was busy working on Mary Pusa. Um, but, oh, Games from Scratch put out a new video. What is it? Top Engines on Steam in 2021. Sweet. I'll have to watch that in a bit. Sup, Ben? All right. So, yeah, as you can see, it did a teeny bit of work um, since we stopped, mostly just. I got a grass shader uh, up. Whoop, whoop. Come on, come on. Oh, here, I was afraid of. I have two versions of the engine open. But yeah, so. Yeah, we're. S so it's just a visually a little bit closer to what uh, we're going for. But yeah, so yeah, yesterday we got kind of all basic movement done. Not necessarily done 100% perfectly, but at least functioning as. as Functioning in an MVP format, uh, minimal viable product. So, uh, I mean, I would, I would like that would definitely be polished, polished before a final release. But just to prove it works, uh, let me toss one of those big old rocks in here, just to reinforce. How's the stream quality too? I, <coughs> excuse me, I tried to get better. Um, I got better internet working today, I believe. So hopefully I shouldn't have any issues. I'm not seeing it. I'm, I'm still seeing a little bit of a performance dip on the stream on on, OB, on OBS. So hopefully it's not too bad today. But let me try toss a rock in here. Uh, these rock pack. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys which um packs I'm using because they are quite fabulous. No no Unreal Marketplace. <coughs> The specific, specifically the the creator, the guy whose uh, assets I use, because they are. I mean, you've probably seen them around if you watch a lot of devlogs and, and other people using stuff. Um, let's see. But I remember um, showed Incros this stuff when we were going over um, talking about Mariposa, and we were like looking for art references. And I showed her this stuff, and she immediately is like, "Oh, that that's Genshin Impact. That's just like exactly Genshin Impact." <laughs> Um, and I was like, yeah, so obviously it's what I use. Um, do, 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 do. If I can find, I'll probably be towards the end, oh, end of my vault. <coughs> Excuse me. Here we go. This is the feller. This is the guy. Um. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. So Alec, uh, I'm not gonna try and pronounce that. Um, but this feller here, uh, his packs are fantastic. Is they're really high quality. They're really nice. Uh, they're kind of this nice. They're stylized, obviously, but they're not tune. Um, so yeah, the one I'm, in this case, the one the one I'm using. I've used a few. I'm using a few of them, but I believe it's this one is the one that I'm have these rocks from. Stylized Ruin Village. Really high quality stuff, so would recommend it if you're kind of looking for some of that style. He's my go-to guy for that. Anyway, that's what this rock is. And let's just show how um, show how well climbing works. 
and immediately I mess up. <laughs> yeah, okay, so... No, there it goes. It, uh, probably, so I, what I probably need to do is adjust some of the... Um, oops. Some of the way it scans for normals. Probably need to do a sphere trace um, instead of a line trace. That could be an issue. But So yeah, it aligns to surfaces. Boom. Then of course we have gliding. So. Do, 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 do. Um, sorry, I just need to check on something and we'll get right to work. What we'll be working on today, let me pull up Gilded and see. So yeah, attacking and interaction are kind of the main things I want to get done, which I'll probably need to get more than that done. Um, sweet. All right, let's get to work. Um, so, question is, how do I want to handle um, it attacking down? I'm going to pull myself down from there. We'll start by making a new attack ability. Back into our character Mac player. Here it is. Abilities. I'll. I might stream for longer today. I'll try to. Um, if I do, I may need to take like a bit of a, a bit of a break just so I can chill and then come back. But uh, let's try making a new ability. Um, attack, no. Ability. I keep forgetting that I can use the. Um, whatever. <laughs> the, the Omega window here, but whatever. Uh, input attack. Oops. Input attack. All right. So this will also be, um, on started. So, I'm gonna have to put everything on the screen so y'all can all see what I'm doing. So, I said input attack. Um, attack. Give it to my character. Um, Grant abilities. Oops, granted abilities. Uh, attack. Oops. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get some, probably should get some sounds in too, because that just has a nice, getting sounds in early, I, I, I it's, it's, it sounds are like a thing you think, ah, oh, uh, that's, you know, cosmetic, that's lower priority than code, and technically it is, but that's also pretty significant to game, to good game feel, and it makes, I don't know, stuff feel good to, to just play even as you're testing, so. So, attack. Well, first, for attack, I need to get some animations. So what I'll probably do, uh, where's the blueprint? I'm, I'm gonna move the, where is it? Animations, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and move this, um, the human animation blueprint back in with the mannequin, where it should be anyway. Um, ah, yeah, I still need to figure out if I wanna use, I mean, I'll probably need to use, use so if I'm gonna make an accurate remake, I need to use those uh, anime characters, but. Probably not merge together. Um, mannequin. There we go. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to keep all the animations for someone in the animation blueprint. Just so it's kind of everything in, is in one place. So I'll use, I think I'll use an interface for that. Um, so. Wait, did I, did I already? Um, I think I already did something like that. Character anim instance. Yeah, okay. I'll just put them in here. Um, montages. Get a attack montage. And we will do it by, well, feed in what attack index we have. Or combo index. Combo index. Montage. Um, okay. Um, so we got an interfaces montage. Here we go. Attack montage. Um, 
should be pretty simple. Uh, let's make a new variable montages um, attack montages. That should be simple. Yep. Perfect. Now. Let's go into now actually would be a good time to make the difference um animation classes i guess it would be because that's the way it works in genshin is you have the difference you know basically the different base classes for um for uh well i, I don't know character classes i guess you said you have the, you know the great sword the uh short sword um archer all those different fighting styles and those would probably each use a different in Unreal languages, would each use a different uh, a child of this. So, let's go ahead and do that. Um, is this the best place to put it, though? Well, actually, what I'll do instead is I will say player. Because, um, yeah, it's good, only the player that's going to use those, right? So, player classes. We'll just make another one. Um, no, um... It's one for each weapon type, right? Yeah. Uh, I may move the weapon. I'll make a, a weapons folder instead. Um, hmm. You know what? I, I'll actually worry about that a little bit later. Uh, for now, I'll just put all the animations right in here. All right. So, I got now, I got right here. Where is it? Um, I think I showed off this guy yesterday, too, but Frank... Uh, Frank animations, ba -do -ba -do. rolls dodges. Um, Frank Mage, did it just pop them all in here? Slash pack, here we go. So these are all the melee ones. I think I'm gonna go with um, dual uh, katana warrior. Katana, katana is a nice tried and true one. Tried and true one. What I will need to do though is I'm gonna need to retarget basically all these on to character and to do that i will say make a new game bid folder it means meaning i have to start actually doing these <laughs> doing the weapon types now all right fine game data um what's it weapon types weapon types because that really determines the animation doesn't it okay um let's say saber saber will be like the Whatever the yeah, actually, well, just to be consistent, we'll call them call them kind of something along the similar. Because I believe it's like a knife is what the no katana. I'm dumb. I'm dumb. Yeah, fuck at this. Katana. Uh, all right. Uh, Frank kind of root motion. Yeah. Oh no, that's not the mannequin boy though, is it? Flashback, it should be, yeah, Katana, uh, animations, mannequin, mannequin root motion, um, retarget, I can't just, come on, do I have to man, oh, man, it'd be nice if he already set it up to be used a human rig, so I could easily retarget this stuff. No skeleton. It would also be nice if he had them all use the same skeleton instead of a different one of each. <laughs> but whatever. Whatever. Uh, mannequin root motion. Yeah, that's the one I want. Um, we made a weapon types. Katana. And I'm... What the heck? Yeah, applied asset preview animation. Try that again. Oi, oi. This is the boring stuff. This is probably stuff I should have done outside of this, converting all this crap, but... Nah. There we go. Th ah, you piece of... <laughs> crap! It had put them all in the main folder. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> Alright, well, let's fix it. 
And then we'll get to the actual interesting stuff. Move here. Don't crash or I'll kick you. There we go. Save. Now. To emanations. Um, I should do it from my computer down here. Okay. Yeah, we'll go with a three hit combo for now. Um, and then montage weapon katana, attack one. And that was that's the at one or that one. Create a new montage, weapon katana attack two. And finally, weapon katana attack three. Uh, Alright. No, no, no. Find, find. Gotta make that mantage. Ay, ay, ay. Alright. Now shorten these boys, because we don't want that big delay. Cut them to like right there. And. Blend in quicker because we want it to be snappy. Quick reactions. Oh, and root motion. We got to make sure they're using root motion. Do do do. Da da da. -da. Uh. Sight and light gun. You say. Oh. Uh, let's take a look at that is. Ah, interesting. That makes me curious what you're, what you're gonna, what you're uh, making, Ben. I, I, I mean, if you're if you're on the Discord, I believe I have a. Um. Not many, not many people use it, but I have a developer content uh, channel under developer tools if you want to post yeah some of the images of kind of the stuff you're working on um be curious to see uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. so yeah right about there is good all right now player attack i have i believe i've made a well you guys think the if you go on follow my twitter a while ago i made a uh for a school project i made a demo uh, for Project Soul, which is something I was, a game I was working on a long time ago and have canceled in in the Metroid Dread sense of cancel, which I mean, like, I'm not, I'm basically not working on it now, but I s probably will at some point because I want to. But anyway, I did a similar attacking combo system there. So I've made a action RPG uh, uh, montage. Yeah, so um, the whole the VTuber thing was was mo okay. So the whole VTuber thing um, was mostly for fun. I I do want to continue doing it if I can. It was causing issues yesterday with um with streaming, and I didn't want to risk that causing issues again today. So um, that's just why. <laughs> um, it's more just a f uh, fun aesthetic. Thing, but yeah, I guess that's it's a spoil a little bit now, isn't it? Um, anyway, anyway, get in an instance because I put that. No, get in an instance because I put the uh, yeah the attack montages in in there. In here, or in the animation instance, um, should be able to play. So we'll completed. Complete ability. Now, I believe I can at least... No, no, because I actually have to add the montages in. But of course, but of course. Uh, attack 1, attack 2. I remember a while back, I don't remember who it was, but people were telling me in RP or Super RPG Framework, they're like, what, can I use animation montages? How can I use animation montages? And I was at the time was like, well, I don't see what the point is. I basically can use animation sequences the same way. And then I found out, oh, no, you can't. Montages are actually better for a number of reasons, <laughs> um, specifically with, with this little node right here. But, um, yeah, so so now let's see if it works. 
Yeah. Now I can attack. Um, I got to add root motion in though, so I'm actually moving as I'm attacking, and I can't do so. I don't do this. This ain't Xenoblade. Xenoblade would make would be a fun remake, wouldn't it? That'd be a fun game to try and do a remake for as well. In fact, I kind of like that. I probably need to make. If I'm gonna do, I kind of like the idea of doing just remakes for all sorts of games and then putting the base code up on the marketplace. But the limitation would be I'd need to make a lot of my own assets for that, just to make a clear separation. Um, <laughs> I, I'll say um, I'm not the only game dev VTuber out there. I'll show you actually another one. Um, let me see. So uh, it's a short answer. Like, it's fine. I mean, VTubers obviously is there's even indie VTuber nothing original about it at this point. I also don't like the idea of like making the fact that you're a game dev VTuber. You're like. I don't know, identity, like that you're being your gimmick. It's a fun aesthetic, I think, but I think that's kind of all it should be, as an personally. I kind of think it, it should be an aesthetic. And my appeal is I have is my focus on Unreal Engine stuff. But um, there is another... Eh, where is it? Where is it? Here. This is actually another um, game dev VTuber that I follow for a little bit. Uh, her name is Ethel. Um, I mean, she does a lot of other stuff, too, but uh, she does has this cat bug game she's working on, so... Yeah. <laughs> um, so knock yourself out. I think it's a fun I, I, uh, idea if you want to do it, the whole VTuber thing. I kind of like how, if you any of you know Kason, I kind of like how she does it, where she has both the live, the the live action persona and the VTuber persona. And I get why like Hollow Live people don't do that because kind of ruins the appeal. But um, uh. Thanks, Ichiro. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm... Let's see. There we go. But I can only do that one attack, and then it... I should probably, yeah, finish the ability on blend out, not on complete, because I need to wait a little bit longer. And, of course, on interruption, we want to cancel it. Um, but we also want to set up the combo, so let's do that. Uh, combo index. And this is actually pretty easy. Um... Yeah, I had a friend who was learning Unreal a little while ago, and he was asking me about setting up a, an attack, and this is essentially the way I would go about handling it. I mean, uh, um, obviously, I, I explained because Omega wasn't out at the time, so I explained without the Omega thing, but it essentially works the same way, like, if you imagine this as being an uh, attack input. So, um, oh, wow! Ba from the world of Final Fantasy, back when I actually showed my face regularly. <laughs> uh, that's cool. Uh, well, thanks, man, uh, for... Uh, Doom for following for that long. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you know, most of the, re the reviews on my channel are archived, so they're not up publicly. Um, I, I mostly just, I'm not, I'm not, I don't like the, one, they don't represent what I do on my channel, but also I'm not happy with the quality of a lot of them. And I don't like that being, like, repre like representative of the work I do on here. So, and I think, I think for everything I did, there's better, re there's reviews that, kind of the similar opinions do I do, but explain it better, so. Um, also, I don't do reviews anymore. It's just like, eh. I think I can spend my time better. But, um, I don't know. So, what we want to do is... Yeah, okay, so we want to grab our combo index. Am I doing this right? Yes, I am. So, um... Oh, I should add, add, add a reason it's uh, the combo is interrupted, so I doesn't don't just can't because I want to. Hmm. Hmm. I may pull out, use input receiver a little differently. Um, here. All right. So what, basically, what I want to do is I have a combo index that increases every time I trigger um, a combo. But oh. I know what I'm. I know what to do. Um, let's make a montage window. So a montage window that'll be like a combo window. That's easy enough. So game framework. Uh, make a folder for anim notifies. Anim notify. Anim no notify. Anim or should be a montage notify. Honestly. And a mon play montage notify window. Here we go. Uh, and 
and notify. Actually, and no. Eh, we'll just do an for now. Um. Nah, and and notify would be better. The thing is, I'm wondering about the. It'd be nice if if they made you have like longer titles for marketplace conventions, but whatever. Let me see. Combo window. Um. Combo. And this will be, yeah, the point at which, in an animation, which we can trigger a combo. I'll get name. Combo window. It's a pretty simple uh, combo. There's not like a lot of crazy stuff, I hope. It means I won't probably need to set up different abilities based on the class, right? Or a different, a different attack ability, but that's fine. This works right now. Mm -hmm. I keep saying this works for now, and that probably just means I'm not going to get any of it finished on time. So, okay, so yeah, impact will be right there. Oh, I should make a impact window as well. Um, means I should change the change the color of this to maybe something like purple, and then and then impact window, and this will be for. The window for doing actual damage. Do 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 do. Impact. All right. So basically, from about there, impact window till about there is when it should be doing damage. And then I like I like to make it the combo. Uh, window like a uh, combos can be started about the same frame so we'll go for about frame nine or ten is when it's triggerable just so there's a nice rhythm to the combo it's like bam 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 you know it's a consistent rhythm and then maybe to about right here where it goes out doesn't matter as much but like if you're you know rapidly tapping the attack button a uh, nice yeah so about right there will be the combo there's a nice rhythm to it And right about there is a good spot for an impact. And we'll show you another handy little uh, um, macro that I made for Omega that I'm pretty sure is in Omega Game Framework. And if not, I'll have to I'll have to make it here and then add it later. But I'm pretty sure it is. Um, that one's a little bit late, so I'm gonna have to. Yeah. Yeah, and then about there. For the combo window, do, 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 do. there we go. Make another track for yield. Strike them. No, no, impact window. There we go. Impact and combo. All right, hey. Um, attack. That's what we want. So let's switch on. We have. Combo, oops, combo and impact. Sorry, impact, impact. Um, in fact, we shouldn't. What I should actually do is I should complete the ability. Ah, uh, this will depend. I don't. Yeah, I think we basically want to cancel out of any attack at any time if we could. But so we're gonna actually complete the ability right after it starts. Right. Well, we'll delay a frame. Um, but then we will immediately finish the ability just so we can immediately reactivate it for our combo. Uh, so let's say make a new one. We'll call it B can combo. Make this a boolean. Um, do 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 do. And we'll also do this have a. Uh, also, another one B is attacking. Let me check. We're currently attacking. Oh no no no. Yeah, and then on interruption. Nah, we can't do that on interruption, can we? Um, let's pull that out for now. We'll stick to the can combo though. So now what I believe is that. <laughs> Well, first of all, valid index. 
I want to check and see if that animation is even valid. Um, and if it is, um, better idea. We should check and see if the... We should increment the combo index before we do the attack. Um, I th Should we do that? Uh, yeah. If it's valid, then cancel the ability. I should probably add a, add a cancel context, like a specific context to canceling, or context node to canceling and completing, just so that um, you have a little more control over what happens. Maybe a tag? I don't know. Probably don't need a tag because it's going to stay local. So yeah, um, maybe just a string. But anyway. <clears throat> what we will do is this. We will create a... I'll give it this for now. Reset attack. No, no, no. Reset attack. And what this will do will be... Do once. We go through this once until we tell the attack to reset. Then, um, as soon as we either, as soon as we're either completed, actually, yeah. Oh, oops. Reset attack. On either when the animation finishes or when a combo is ready, we will reset and allow them to attack. Um, what I shall also do is maybe... Yeah, we'll better start that out at negative one then. I may not even need the combo window then. I don't know. <clears throat> well, we'll see. Uh, and it starts off at negative... No, 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 no. Negative one. There. Now let's see what happens. Do you... Nothing. A big old fat nothing. <laughs> um, I wonder why. Combo. It's probably because I named it com No, I named it combo. Well, let's... Breakpoint. Breakpoint. Um, add breakpoint. Okay, so we hit reset attack. Print. Print. Uh, try trigger attack. Let's go. Ah, oh, no, no. Get rid of the breakpoint now. We don't need that. Disable breakpoint. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so if I, like, wait long enough, it works. Oh, wait, wait. Well, I, should also, I should actually put this afterwards just so I know if it's going through. Hmm. But it, like if it'll delay, it works. And nothing happens when it's interrupted. So, um, works for for shorter. Could it be the index is wrong? No, I don't think it should. Well, oops, oh, make sure they plugged in. Okay, so it's like I hit it. To <laughs> what? What? All right, think, brain. So what we say is when we, all right, let's even label these. So try trigger attack, attacking cooldown. Um, um, Get next combo, combo, and then 
Blade combo. Um, I don't think this is doing anything right now, so I probably don't need to remove it, but reset uncompleted this reset attack i'm doing a double re reset attack here that's what i don't get uh is it even is it even running through the comp well no it is because the breakpoint happened which means it should let me go jump through again oops that's what i don't understand <sighs> Again, I'm trying to pinpoint the exact moment it's screwing up. Oh, more like that. Enable the breakpoint. I can step back from those, right? All right. Uh, can I step back? Yeah. Okay. So we go through all the shenanigans. <laughs> Did I, sw did I put these backwards? No, those are correct. Yeesh. This is a problem. Don't worry about impact. I'm going to worry about the impact right now. I may not even need the combo window. It could just let you combo to the end of the thing, but whatever. Um, Yeah, I'm gonna pull up an image that I sent my uh, friend to see. Oh, I told him to do this, just to remind myself. All right, if you're not attacking and you can combo. Basically, this was so. This was the image that I sent him to kind of lay out. So when we start an attack, we check. All right, are we already attacking? If not, then. Uh, and he's like, "This is early stuff." So, um, all right. Um, if not attacking and can combo. Um, or allow attack if not currently attacking, or if the player can combo. I, I think this is redundant, but I forget why I set it up that way. I probably was at the point. Then, if it's a valid attack index, uh, which it was because it didn't go to that, then uncompleted reset attack. And on reset attack, clear scam combo. Yep, yeah, uh, let's just go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and try and replicate this. Um. Uh, reset attack. And we'll use that after all. B is attacking. And we'll set our combo index to zero. So if I'm not attacking, I'm gonna I'm gonna try it this way first. Um, let's see if that's if I did it, done it. If I'm either not attacking or if I can combo, then grab our combo index. We'll increment it first. And then we need to make it sure we're actually attacking. Tell them we attacking, boys. Boy, all right, and I cleared that, so reset attack. Can combo, cannot combo. So now these actually have value. <laughs> um, all right, uh, well, that's everything I have mapped up here, so let's try. Cleaned up a little bit more. Now I'm not seeing now. Now it's doing something. Oh, it sets attacking off. That's why. No, it's still doing the. Th does it think the ability is still running? Let me check activated tick just to see if the ability is still running. Because that will be a problem. Yeah, there we go. It's still going for some reason. Even though it should like complete the ability right away. Ten frames, but I'm hitting it again, and then it activates again. I don't get that. 
Oh, well, one thing is here. Cancel the ability if it's false. That could be a pro. That might. I wonder if that could be why. That may be why. I don't know. But now we just loop the same attack over and over again. I can get rid of that, but. Oh, right, because I'm. There, let's reattach that. Still wait one frame. That's good. I think I just need to modify where the win combo window is. So we'll say we'll put it at frame 12 instead for each of these. That doesn't feel quite as fluid, so let's knock it down to frame 11. But the point is, at least got, we got working. Now what we got to do is set up so we can actually damage stuff. Um, all right, well, attacking, basic attacking is done. Clear out some of this stuff we don't need yet. Um, so, so talking back to Omega. One nice thing about... Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Ah, one nice thing about a Mega Game Framework um, is the ability, since, again, abilities are actors. Um, hello, King Jokes. <laughs> uh, what's up? Uh, one nice thing in Omega about um, abilities is since they're actors, you can add components to them. So a typical example of how I would do an attack. Let's go to begin play. Um, is I would add a... You can actually add, like... A skeletal mesh or a static mesh or um, boxes in here so for example here um static mesh i'm at a static mesh i'm gonna call it weapon um although i mean I actually i don't actually want to i don't want to actually well we'll keep it there for now um reference weapon because we actually want the weapon to be on the character because it's not just going to be used in this ability oh wait no but it doesn't matter because um yeah because we can just still Make, this ability is always going to be active. So, we just need to make the ability visible. So, that's cool. I believe I imported a weapon set. I think. Please tell me. Static mesh weapon. No, that's the... Do I have... Oh, shoot. Crap. What did I just open? A windmill. Nah, nah, we can't be swinging a windmill around. That would be funny. I don't think anyone's behind me, mate. <laughs> do, 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 do. Newbie sword. Ah. Imported something. Yeah, okay. This will be fine for now. So, what I want to do is I want to attach something. I think I want to attach the ability. Yeah. Attach actor to actor. I want to attach I on this thing is already attached to the um the char the character belongs to. It's like let me take this off. If I open this now, you'll see what the heck is going on. Well, what's happening is I need to take um yeah, remove collision on this. There, that's better. Um, so now I just need to attach it to my hand, which I believe is just hand R, right? Hand R. Um, although it would be better to have a socket. No, but that's not it. All right, let's make us a um, socket. Yeah. Um, Socket should be fine. Um, anyway, where did that character at? Asset? No, no, no. Actors, character, mannequin. Um, where's his hand? Hand R. Add socket. Socket and R. Which I want the um, to be about right there. Because. Just copy the socket name, right? Yeah, there we go. 
It needs to be where the get ability owner. Perfect. Um, and I'm gonna snap to target. What the heck? Am I missing anything? This is strange. Maybe delay it. See what happens. It's already attached. It just needs to be attached at the socket is all. Hmm. Come on! What is with you, sir? Unreal boys, am I missing anything here? On a Vivi gameplay, attach uh, the thing. Attach this ability specifically to their socket. <laughs> what is happening? Um, force always animated. I mean. It's not on a different skeleton, is it? No, yeah, this is the right one. Oh, uh, boo. Let's make it longer. What happens after five frames? It's like, yeah, it's just hanging out in the middle there. Let's check uh, the character, because all the abilities are right there with the character, so... It's weird, maybe, I don't think the socket is real, but I did hand R before, and that was fine, or that was still wrong, so, uh, you mean, like, dream games I'd want, I'd like to make, like, is that kind of what you mean? Oops. Oh, yeah, we can't have him attacking in the air. Dah. You frick. You frickin' frick. When will you learn? Let your actions have consequences. Um... Attach act com actor to component? Attach actor to component? Hey, Electro Kraken. What's up? I'm trying to figure out how to attach a sword to the mannequin's hand because it's not working for some reason. <laughs> Even though everything looks like it should. Um, attach actor to component. Uh, let's just get, I don't know, get mesh. Give ability owner mesh. Target. Um, I mean, too many to list. That's the problem. Um, I have all sorts of games. I'd like to make. I would like to make a lot of like turn-based JRPGs because I like that. Um, there we go. Now it's actually attached. I just have to change the orientation on it on the on the bone and stuff. Um, oh, and we want to use the socket, of course. Um. I'll say, I'll say this. One game I would really love to make is a game that's sort of like a... <laughs> sort of like a mix of... Um, of like a CRPG. Something that's got a lot of focus on character choice and character progression, but with a more... Uh, Final Fantasy twelve, Final Fantasy fourteen style aesthetic and world. Something like that. Um... I've, I've had tons of ideas for it, and that's one of those things that, like, it's it's in the brain of something I want to do, but there's a lot of other games I have uh, that I want to make first. But first got to finish, you know, Mariposa and working on other stuff. So it's like, if I, I'd probably need a bigger team for it as well. So that's one. Obviously, um, Mariposa is the one I'm working on right now, but I, I have... I've talked about Orpheus Project. That's kind of on the... In a similar state as, as Project Soul, where it's sort of like... It's, I'm still working on it in my time, but it's sort of like, eh, I can't not really work on it. I would love, like, a, a CRPG, yeah, but with, with a little more kind of JRPG sensibilities in terms of, like, its storytelling and its aesthetics. That would be really, really cool. Um, kind of like how Dark Dark Souls is sort of the... Actually, Dark Souls is very much feels like a Western RPG, but it's made by Japanese developers. And maybe that's not a great comparison, but... Um, anyway... So let's rotate that socket. Socket. Um, 90 degrees. 
Nope. 90 degrees again. Am I missing something here? Snap to target. Well, what I'll probably do is, okay. Um, set relative. Well, I think set relative, right? Set relative. This should fix it, I think. <laughs> we'll see. Um, okay. Add an, oops, a 90 degree angle to Z. Okay, that did something. What I really want to do is roll it, though. Um, no, no, no. We'll do 90 at a time. A 90 other way. Okay, that's the roll one. This is the one I want, I think. Great, except I got it backwards. Okay. I'll, I can find two. We tune that, and there's probably better ways of setting this up, but that'll work for now. Now, what's interesting is actually um, uh, set weapon visibility is that um, remember in Genshin, the weapon kind of appears and disappears uh, based on whether the ability whether you're actually attacking or not. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, uh, the weapon will be set visible when we attack. And when, um, whenever the attack is completed, I would say completed or interrupted. I think that should do it. Then it's not visible. And also start off invisible, too. Wait, well, actually. Probably make that on a begin play so we can still kind of debug and see what we're doing. There. Now let's try that out. <sighs> okay, yeah. And we can have a better particle effect or whatever. Anyway, now we need to do damage. Uh, and this is what I was talking about with adding components. What I would do is just add in a box here, a box collision. Instead of needing to do, basically this is a way so you don't necessarily need to do trace and fiddle around to get everything really precise because all you can do is just match up a box collider to kind of how you want it to look. Um, yeah. And there we got our hitbox. What's up, Jada? What's up? It's going better now. We were having a—I was having a trouble a minute ago trying to get the sword to actually attach to his hand, but uh, I actually got it working now. So, um, so all right. So here's what I uh, one of the macros that I wanted to show you before, and this is particularly useful for something like this—an attack. Um, where you want to, to do damage to multiple guys in the area, but you only you only want to do damage to them once. Because, so, like, let me see if I can find that combo. The way this works is during this entire section right here, this entire window, um, we need to be able to damage anyone that the weapon hits. But we don't want to have we don't want to be like running a loop. Uh, basically, we don't want to damage anyone more than once. Obviously. So um, what we do is anyone in here, we want to make sure it hits. If it hits them, it damages them once, uh, only once until this is over. Then it'll reset. So, yeah, um, I, well, that's what I did. I was initially trying to um, attach actor to actor because this is already uh, a child of the um, player. Abilities are attached to the player character because um, they're actors as well. And that wasn't working, so I went ahead and attached it to the mesh component. And that worked fine. Which makes sense. I just realized. Yeah, no, you were right. <laughs> um, I just realized why, of course, that was dumb. Because there's no socket on the actor. There's a socket on the mesh. Um, anyway. I might even replace the socket with an actual component on the actor later. But for now, whatever. All right. So, what was I showing? Right. Um... What I wanted to do is, so, is, let's see, impact. Impact, 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 impact. Actually, let's pull up tick. So what I'm going to do is this. How I'm going to handle impact is this. Um, v is impacting. This will be another one we need to turn off when we reset attack. And what we will do is uh, 
I'm also going to change the color so this so it's more appropriate for something dangerous. So where are we at? Right, event tick. Um, the thing that everyone tells you not to use, even though it's completely fine to use if you know what you're doing. Uh, anyway, what we want to do is, uh, let's see. I'm going to, um, when we tick, well, actually, we'll do another save. Eh, no, 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 no. Yeah, this, this is a fine um, check. So uh, every frame, um, if we are running impact, what we're going to do is... Let's make a do once on this one. Um, uh, okay, the macro. That's what I wanted to show you. I have a new macro here called uh, do once. I think it's do once per object. And what this does is it'll loop through a series of objects and it'll up run a function on for every object in there, but it'll only ro eh, run it once for every single uh, time it gets that object. So until you tell it to reset. So that way, every single frame we can check to see what actors are overlapping this hitbox and it'll only run if we're actually running impact so that's better for performance but it'll if it um it'll uh only apply that damage to an actor once until we reset the attack and that way um get overlapping actors and do we want a class filter let's say get o overlapping Act, yeah, we can just eh, get overlapping actors as a whole might get ridiculous later, but for now we'll go ahead and do it. In fact, actually, that's fine because we can decide what actors it hits. So, custom. We don't want it to hit world static. Just world dynamic pawn. We're not going to use physics bodies, but there. And now it'll. I can even uh, do everything it hits, or no, print out everything it hits. Boom. And the only thing it's hitting now is me. <laughs> Because I'm the only on dynamic, which means we gotta filter me out so I don't hurt myself. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. Like, I mean, adding sockets to the mesh is, mesh is the cheapest way performance-wise to do it. I actually have found, and this depends on how expensive your stuff goes. I actually have found I like um at going into the actual. I'll show you. Um. Long term, I like actually going into the character instead of using sockets typically. I like going into the character mesh, and what I'll do is add a scene component. And then attach that, say, to their... In fact, I'll even do that now, because I'll probably use it later. Hand root. Because that gives me a more immediate um, kind of look. At, if I were to, say, attach... I don't know, a sword to this. I could Im more immediately see kind of how it would look. And then I have more control over it, since it's a scene component. Um, I, mean, I believe that's a little heavier on performance, but like it's a small enough margin of difference that it shouldn't matter. So I'll we'll just say slot and R. And we'll keep it for now. Um, I just probably won't use it yet. All right. Um, mm, player attack. Where was I? Right. So equals. If it's not equal me, um, me the, char the character executing the ability. I also probably should think about setting this up in a way where enemies could use it as well, but maybe later. So, now let's add some spheres into here and make them movable objects, because I believe... Will that make their... It's a world static, so custom. We want to make it a world dynamic so I can actually hit them. Just to test out. Actually, actually, I only need one, actually. So now, bam. It didn't do anything. You turd muffin. Um, did I do that right? Yeah, okay. So, I don't know why it's not working on there. Let's give it a hitbox. Maybe that'll fix it. Box collision. Mm -hmm. That's a big old collision box. Um, 
Yeah, uh, Unreal is, uh, like, notoriously, it's uh, initially an FPS engine, which is why making an FPS. It's the reason, if any of you were around when I did the uh, Epic Game Jam last year, um, basically my first thought is I want to do an FPS because that's the easiest type of thing to build uh, in Unreal quickly because all the stuff is already set up for it. And there, we're hitting our, we're technically hitting our sphere, and we can only hit it once. So, now, let's make some enemies because we got attacking working. Boom. Ah. Alright, and grass is gone. <laughs> That's fine, it'll spawn back. Alright, time to make some enemies. Some C and M enemies. Which is pretty cool. Actors, character, enemy, um, character, character. And I believe I imported some enemy stuff already, so. But I don't need to worry about that now. Venture character. BP. Enemy base. Enemy based. Enemy is not based. So, component. Obviously. Combatant component. And we will give the enemy their own uh, set of attributes. Well, and not own set, but their own attribute. Or, yes, their own attribute set. Not their own set of attributes. There. Good luck to you, man. Uh, you're going to have, yeah. Uh, boy. Um, 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 Omega, there we go. Attribute set. At set enemy. Which for now, I think they only need, need health. They don't need anything else. <laughs> well, I guess they're going to need the other stuff later. So we would say attack. Defense. But that's all they need for now. We'll also add a new value category. Um... We will say enemy. Just so I can adjust that stuff. Um, later. <laughs> well, everyone starts as a noob, don't they? That's how we learn. Anyway, attribute set. They're going to use the enemy attribute set. Um, oh, yeah, I need to... Can I set combatant data asset? Yeah. Data asset. I don't. I need to fix that. Because otherwise the data asset thing and faction thing are a little useless right now, aren't they? Alright. Oh, let's also make him a different color. Or her. What does that mean? Yeah. Make it just more visually distinct. Um, make him red. That's easy enough. Actually, I may want to use colors for debugging the different character types, so we'll go with black. Shadow Man. We'll do black there, but we'll also do the... Make the chest logo red. Make them a little more identifiable. Um, thank you. I can't take credit for those environments, though, because... Um, I'm going to pull this up again because I think some of you weren't here at the start. Um, so... For this, I'm actually using um, a set of uh, environment packs from a certain developer. If I can find him again. Um, but you see on the Unreal Marketplace, here we go. This guy is the um, guy whose environment packs I'm using. And I, I mean, if you're familiar with Genshin Impact, I'm just going to show you this why, or this image, and you'll kind of see exactly why. This is one of his packs, which is basically exactly Mondstadt from Genshin Impact because that's kind of the style his stuff looks like. So yeah, um, that's what I'm using. Uh, I'm going to need to speed up some of this development though because I've only got five days after this to get through. Um, anyway. But one of the nice things about environment, or that's the nice thing about game de development is all these environment packs and stuff, you can just get them, put them in your game. Typically you want to modify them a little bit so they look, they fit your style. But yeah, you can make really nice looking stuff super quickly. And I know some people, especially early people, are afraid of that. You don't want to be labeled an asset flip and stuff. And I totally get that. But really don't be afraid of using assets like from the marketplace and stuff in your game. Um, like, yeah. I mean, I mean re like, uh, most games, you, there, are, there are plenty of games that use assets from different online. <laughs> yeah, it basically is. Online marketplaces and stuff. What will be a lot more noticeable is if you copy and paste, like, maps. Uh, or if you don't arrange stuff in an interesting way. 
Um, but yeah, like, uh, don't worry about using stuff in the marketplace. It's re it really is fine, like plenty of people do. It's about how you use it, not the fact that you use it. So, enemy, right. Add that red logo in. Oh, he's a nice target. And he's a combatant. Um, dice up stats. All right. Let's see. On damage. So, I probably need this a little bit of anything. Um, player attack. Player attack, right. Um, pass to actor. It's obviously, go it's always going to be an actor because I'm only getting them. So, get rid of that. Get from component by class. Combatant component. So if check if they have a uh, combatant component, and if so, all this would probably be better as a mo a, a um, what is it called, an interface, but whatever. <laughs> um. No, see, um, because a lot of people know uh, it's 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 about. So the thing about I mean I, I, just, I have to be careful with time because I want to stay focused. But the thing, the reason. The reason at, uh, asset flips have the bad reputation they have is because the problem is not with the assets themselves. The problem is with the fact that what people do, what develop like this sh shady developers do, is they buy up a bunch of assets. Like if you guys have um, not heard of Dream World, the first stuff for it, this is the, an example of that. What the problem people have is that you buy up a bunch of assets and then you just throw them all together, like willing. It's it's clear that there's no work put into it. But if you know what you're using, because I'm telling you most of this. Heck, Unreal Engine. Most mo a lot of games use the same assets. That's the reason people like why why Quixel why Unreal Engine owns Quixel or lets you you know use its library because plenty of stuff does. You can use most of the stuff that's been in like Hollywood movies like The Lion King and stuff because a lot of it's in the Quixel library and you can use that in Unreal Engine because um, if it's clear that like you've made something original and put effort effort into the game, uh, it really. Uh, does not matter like people no one's gonna care it's when it's obvious that you haven't put effort into it that people take issue with it um anyway that's enough about assets flipping and stuff <laughs> um i need to drop some enemies into test um that too i mean that's always a good i typically you'll want to modify assets anyway just because um when you throw a bunch of stuff in the artistically it's going to clash and it's become going to come more become more apparent but if you know what you're doing, which apparently I don't because they're not hitting. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, if you know what you're doing, if you just make you know stuff mesh together well, it's it's fine. So, and that is the last time I'm going to talk about that because I need to be focused. <laughs> um, let's just make sure that's actually going through. There. Okay. So I'm actually I'm hitting these guys, and it's not showing up on s main screen. So let me show that for you. See? Whee! Damage. Um, okay. I need to check to see if I have any, like, hit or damage. Um, not marketplace, library. Assets that I can import. Um, anim other animations. What animations do I got? I got death animations. Um, mocap and pedestrian. I probably can just use, use the same animations from the um, from the katana pack, right? Yeah, let's do that. Use that for the enemies now. Um, aim katana. Is it damage or hurt? Probably hurt. No, man. It would be in play stuff, right? Let's look. Attack combo, skill, attack combo, stance, tumbling. I do need to add dashing in as well, though. Um, jump, guard, clash, evade. Not evade. Um, man, that's, that's, wait, sorry. If you don't do, if I don't know environmental design or level design, how much should I modify it? Honestly, it's really, you could probably not even modify stuff and then, um, 
and it's just if you arrange it in a way that looks nice, which there are different videos that I'll say if I'll actually let me let me show you um, a YouTube channel uh, for you specifically, Jade, because he there's this guy who um, you may have heard of him. His name is Thomas Brush. He's made several in, um, indie games. He works in Unity, not Unreal, but he's working on a game right now called Father, which is a uh, first person shooter, kind of like a Halo. Well, not Halo, um, like a um, Half-Life inspired, but he talks about this sort of stuff as well. About um, and he's like put out several games, so he's a professional. He knows what he's talking about. Um, he talks about this sort of stuff as well, as far as um, uh, how to use assets and how to make stuff like in a way that um, blends well with your game. And it's really, I would recommend looking at him, especially watching his, some of his videos on Father or his live streams um, where he goes over this stuff. But it's really more about composition, how you put stuff together, and um, more so than um, using other assets. So, Vertex Painting? Oh, that's true. You learn how to set up Vertex Painting. And honestly, um, man, I said I'd stop, I'd stop with this, but yeah, just check out Thomas Brush and stuff like that. And um, It's, more again, more. And again, it's also one of those things, the more you do it and the more you like look at other stuff for reference to see how they do it, the more you practice, the better you get. So, where was that? Your question, Bran. Um, to the combatant. Uh, on damaged? Yes, this is part of the combatant component in Omega Game Framework, which I think I need to... I definitely need to do a video going over the combatant. But, um... um yeah, just go ahead and, and go for stuff on that. I mean, if you really want to be safe, if you go for more photorealistic stuff, that's going to be stuff people will notice even less because it's, you know, photorealistic. So, yeah. Um... Sorry, to answer your question, Ben, yeah, this is in, in the combatant component. All right, now, frag, I need to keep getting distracted. Anyway, I know that I know it's reaching them. What I need to do, then, is have some sort of impact and damage. Well, now's the time to pull up references. Uh, Genshin Impact Combat. There we go. That's a tiny image, or or not. So we got the little. Um. Let's see. Okay, I'm getting a little distracted. Um. Okay, I think I'm just trying to think of how to want to do that. Yeah, I'm not caught up on it, but I have watched Attack on Titan. Um, I haven't been, like, in recently, though. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, so what I want is I want a meter, like a health meter for them. I think I could use the same one, the same attribute meter that I did for the player. So, let's do that. Let's make a new widget. Widget. I don't know. Make a new. Come on, new new user widget. Enemy enemy HUD. There we go. Attributes. W attribute. Okay, for what specifically? Um, so you're looking for a job. I mean, it would depend on what you're trying to, as far as the job goes, what you're applying for. If you're applying for, like, your code knowledge and saying, hey, I can program and code and stuff, then, yeah, that's what you want to show off. If you're applying for artistic stuff, then that's you would want to focus on making original stuff. But really just depends. I think I should probably add in something too. Let me check. Did I did I close it out? Ah, frick me. Did I close? I closed it. Ah, man. All right, back. Get that Im reference image back up. Um. 
Where is it at? Oh boy, you'll search for it one minute, and the next minute the photo, the same thing is gone. It's dumb, lame. Well, this works. This one works, I think. Um, so yeah, it does not show the. It shows their level above them, but uh, not the meter. So I'll even just actually. Uh, no, yeah. Um, vertical progress bar. Vertical box, not vertical progress bar. What am I saying? Um, blue, blue. There you go. Now horizontal because we're gonna add some text for the level in there. Yeah, then if it's only coding, I would say focus on stuff that would showcase your coding skills. Um, All right, um, let's say set combatant. We'll keep this as a vague combatant so we can set it potentially to other stuff too. Combatant. Combatant interface, that's what we want. And of course, debug, because we don't want to be grabbing anything that's invalid. Although I don't know if it would matter, because I believe it checks to see if the combatant is valid already, but just to be safe. Well, a good way a good way to actually um, test that out is game jams. Um, Epic has a the Epic Mega Jam every year. King jokes. Um, that's I made one this last year just to be like, all right, I want to make a game beginning to end um, in one week, and it's really good exercise. So that sort of stuff is is helpful, especially since then you have a, even more of an excuse to use stuff from the from the marketplace and whatnot because um, you only have a limited amount of time. So. It's going to be for the attribute um, equals HP attribute attribute. Yeah, I was fine. Oh, man, but I had an issue with this before, didn't I? Actually, we're not even using this text one, are we? We're just using the um, progress bar, which I think I'm still having issues with, aren't I? Or am I? I don't know. Maybe. Um, but yeah, that's something I need to fix in Omega. So, and also, what we want to do is say set level. No, no, set text. Set text. Get level. Plug the matte level into the text. Um, now, widget, widget. Give them a wi that widget right above their heads. UI, and then the HUD, and it's going to be in screen. And then, after they spawn, give it a frame to wrap things up. Get object. Use widget object. Cast enemy HUD. And set combatant. And in you go. Now, let's see if that worked correctly. Uh, I 
course, I have to actually tell it to use the health attribute. Yeah, well, game devs or game um, jams do take a lot of effort, but look at that. That's taking way too long to kill him, though. Go faster. How much damage am I doing? 10? Well, there's the problem. Let's do 30. That should be 4 hits and we take him down. Yeah, unless we miss him. And then, enemy. Undamaged. If, um. Get. Actually, we'll do a sequence just so we can split stuff off. Get attribute value of health. And if it's less than... And again, this combatant stuff is all in Omega, so... Uh, no, no, not less than. Less than or equal to. If it's less than or equal to that, then... Death. Once. Which for now we'll just destroy. Or death. 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 Troy. Bam. Bam. Got him. All right. Now. Time for some reactions, though, because we want to kick them back. Um, and that requires... Oh, actually, something else I want to do. I want to make sure that the... Um, that when you attack, it, it aligns your character correctly with the way they are looking. So... I may just change the name of this to, like, Action RPG Pack or something. I don't know. Um, back to player. Back to player. All right, so the idea, the way we want to handle this is whenever we get a movement input, um, whenever we get a movement input, we want to save that. I'm going to clamp this down into a, a node. Nah, that's actually that's fine. Uh, input ac axis, or move in input axis. And then when we complete it, which should be when we let go, then it resets it to zero. Um, I've done this before. I may need to look up how to do it again, though. We get an arrow. Basically, I want to set this to whatever. Um, actually, I'm okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little something here. Um, I am going to pull up the code for uh, Mary Post and the Galaxy Man. You guys probably won't be able to see much of it because I'm gonna go through it pretty quickly, um, and there won't be any spoilers because it's coming out again. Mary Post and the Galaxy Man, uh, code developed by me for uh, with uh, Ink Rose Inc. Um, coming out on. Um, on the demo coming out on Steam, hopefully within the next week or so. Crossing the fingers. Um, but, yeah. So, let's just wait for that to load up. And I am going to copy and paste the code from there, because I know I, I did the same thing in there. Basically, what I'm trying to do is um, save whenever, whenever the um, player inputs on the... Um, keypad or the controller or whatever when they do a movement input it'll immediately rotate their um or it'll immediately point make it basically a pointer in that direction so that if you do something like attacking uh or dodging it'll snap the character into that correct direction so that way you're always whenever you do something like that it's always going to make sure the character is facing the direction the player wants them to excuse me um So for now, um, should I be showing you this level? I don't think it matters. This was in the screenshot, so it's fine. Another thing to do, don't be afraid to copy and paste stuff from your other projects. <laughs> um, so now let's see. I'm going to keep most of this hidden from you. Um, the player character for Mariposa. 
Or mariposa, I guess, is the proper pronunciation. All right. Um, early behind the scenes for this game. Yay. Um, land on a fall. It would be movement graph, I see. Or set control to rotation. Here we go. This is the one I want, uh, I think. Yeah, this is the one I want. I think. Input direction. This is almost the one I want. I need a little bit more than this, but what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Copy control rotation and paste it in for the player. Set control to rotation. The only difference is... Dummy rotation. We'll save that. Uh, I may even change that. I don't know. Problem is, we want to change this over time. So basically, what I'm doing right now is over the course of a. You don't want to do it right away because that'll make your camera snap weird. But over the course course of about one frame, we're gonna blend from um, from whatever nor normal direction is to whatever the input direction is. Um, it's probably will make more sense once. Uh, uh, boy. Actually, that's fine. This probably make more one sense once you see the final version. Um, set rotation to control. That might be a better thing to do, though. Yeah, nah, we'll leave it for now. For now, it's good. If I Basically, if I need, when I say for now, it means if I need to change it later, because I don't know if I do, but if I do, then I can change it later. So next thing I need to do is copy that. Hopefully any girls isn't in here. She's going to be like, why are you copying? <laughs> You're stealing the code for our game. Uh, boy. All right. So here's the boy. This is what I wanted. Set input rotation. Oops. Not to fix copy right there. And drop it into the same spot. Set input rotation right there. Um, which means I don't even need this stuff. Get rid of that movement axis. Um, input direction. Good thing. I named it. I didn't even think of that, but I did name it the same thing. So now, as long as this is available, it might be easier now to show you what I was doing. Not the arrow's not there. So let's make sure that it is visible. It's a little hidden in game. Um, okay, that's not working. Let's see. Yeah, it's the same copy control stuff. Oh, Bob, well, that put in the movement axis. Yes. Yes. On completion. Not on sequence. That's why. Because then it's just zeroing it out. As you do. <laughs> so now. There we go. You see how as I'm, as I'm moving, it's snapping the uh, thing that way. So now, what I want to do is close out Mariposa so I don't actually show you any spoilers or stuff from that. <laughs> um, sure, save. And hopefully, no one touches the thing while I'm out. Um, yeah, I'm noticing the conversation that... What, did it crash? Did it crash as I closed it? Okay. All right. Uh, it happens. Unreal crashes. Um, honestly, I'll say... I'll, I also will add to this conversation quickly. I never b paid for any tutorials with Unreal. Everything I've learned has been entirely... One second. Um, everything I have learned... Just taking care of some business. One minute. I bet it's something broke in another project. <laughs> it looks like it crashed for someone else, too, at the same time. Anyway, everything I've learned has been entirely for free. It's just me working on stuff on my own, looking up YouTube videos, and then Google searching what I needed to. So, I mean, I've asked a few people for help on when I was learning C++, but that was really it. So, yeah, you, uh, learning from... People, it's, there's definitely advantages to learning from people specifically because they can help you directly with problems. But I think you probably don't need it. Um, yes, Unreal Slackers. That that's another good, great free resource. Um, so 
But, I mean, yeah, compared to Unity, there isn't as much stuff for Unreal. Anyway. Where is where is that attack animation? Or attack a bit thing? When I think it hits three, I'll probably take a break for a little bit and then be back. Um... Where's the ability? Under player, All right. So what we'll do here. Oops. Drag that down. Okay. And this will be attack start. So right in here, let's grab our character. Get ability character. In fact, nah. Uh, pass, pass to player. Because with enemies, we can just have them look at whatever target they're attacking. Um, that'll be an easier solution for this. Should I make an interface then? Well, maybe, maybe. But again, later. Anyway, so now I'll say set control or set rotation to control. Also, do that. And now, whenever I attack, it'll snap me to the control I need. And boom! So now I can... Which means now I have dying enemies, and all I want to implement now is dodge, and then I got... What else do I need? If Once I get dodge in, let me see what else I got. Battle skills? Screw that. I'll do that later. <laughs> I just want to get dodging in, then move on to interaction and items. Um, all right, dodging. Or I guess it would be dashing because it's, it's kind of what it is, is a dash at the start of the sprint. So, I'll make ability, ability dash. And what's nice is it uses the same input as, um, sprint, so we'll just... Use that same input there. Um, how long have I been using Unreal? I started learning Unreal, I believe it was about five years ago now. Maybe a little bit more, but that's when I started. Um, I would say it probably took me about two to three years of using it to really feel like I was, all right, I know fully what I'm doing. And I've like learned a lot more since then. But as far as, as like, all right, I feel like I can, can maybe two years, like to navigate the, every element of this pretty well. Um, so, yeah. Which, if you're serious about game development, not too bad, especially if you're learning on your own. Anyway, first thing we want to do when we dash is basically just the same thing. Set rotation to the controls, so we're making sure we're dashing in the correct direction. Oh, I also want to make sure that um, if I'm not doing it, yeah, it doesn't make doesn't send me to the wrong spot. Um... Is dash in the montage? I think you already have dash animations in here, right? Let's look. Rolls and dodges. Here we go. Root motion, of course. Um, dodge forward. Nope. Um, I mean, it's close. Dodge forward root. That's the one we want. That's the boy. Create anim anim montage dodge. And... We're also going to blend this out a little bit because we want to go back to, uh, basically we want to go right into the sprint from it, so about there. So, and we're going to blend out pretty quickly. Also, root motion, root motion naturally, because we want to um, do it. And, of course, the amazing thing about uh, Control Rig now is you can edit animations and root motion stuff very easily in engine which is sweet da -da -da -da. all right montage complete um not blend that interruption cancel an interruption oh thanks man appreciate it
Dodge. Now, let's go. I can't go because I have to make sure he can actually use the ability. Yes, yes. Always make sure to grant your abilities before you can use them. And dash. There we go. Let's try it. Nope. Didn't work. Why? Um... Should have activated both. I know why. Because this is using an animation that's incorrect. <laughs> Hang on. Um, I know, uh, yeah. Okay. Retarget. Break you. I'm using it on, on an old, on uh, incorrect skeleton. I really just need to get rid of all these old skeletons that I don't want. Or I would, but that would take time. Um, duplicate and retarget. Uh, yeah. I think that's right. No, no, no. Action, or adventure RPG thing. That's what we want. All right. I really should be storing stuff in here, shouldn't I? Because um, it's stuff I'm not going to want to carry over when I put this on the marketplace. Um, Yeah, I'll put the link in. I don't have a ton there. I basically have my Game Jam game, Star Eater. And a, a meme game, if you're a fan of uh, of Fate Stay Night. Um, which I think may have been removed. No, it wasn't. Never mind, it's still there. Uh, there you go. That is my Geo page. <laughs> anyway. So if you're a Fate Stay Night fan and you want to celebrate Shira Day this year, you know, uh, just go to Geo and you can... Do so. Um, anyway, framework characters and <laughs> uh, yeah, we target. Put the correct dash in there, and now let's try it. Boom. I mean, it's not because it blends out too early, but it's close. Close. Right now. Bam. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's not the smoothest dodge, but. <laughs> well, that's easy enough. Uh, let's jump into the. Good old sequence editor. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. I, yeah, I mean, obviously I don't pay much attention to the itch stuff now, but if you want to leave feedback, I would appreciate it because it's obviously it's always I can use it. Um, let's see. So what we got to do? Hang on here. Very simple. Edit with FK control rig. Basically, just got to make the dash longer. Did it work? No. Did it crash? Did we crash? Boys, we might have crashed. <laughs> and it's probably bound to happen sooner or later. Um, I did say FK control rig, so it shouldn't... There we go. There we go. So basically, all we got to do... And sorry, my timeline's not on screen so i probably won't be able to show this but all i'm gonna do is his let's see his root bone basically extend how far his um in his root bone just how far he is able to dash to which i'm going to make cubic so it's a linear why did it stop? <laughs> it stopped for some reason. It's really, it should stop about right there. Or smooth out more. But basically, I just want to grab this, and it's on auto keyframe, and drag him out that far. So our dash is going to be, boom, that far. That's a nice distance, I'd say. So I believe, once I save this, it should apply to update the animation. <laughs> basically at least of an unreal developer did it crash which it might have again it's trying to save there we go now let's try it out 
Close that boy. Control rig is so cool. It saves me so much time. Um, until it tries to save. There we go. Just get rid of the toolbox. Yeah, that's a better dash. And now, dash whichever direction. So now I can... And, uh, course. Um, dodging needs to be able to... I'll just call it dash. Be consistent, like I said. Um, we want to cancel... Uh, what is it? Attack? Let me see. Um, I didn't add an attack ability, did I? I only need to do that. That's why I can't find it. Or an attack ability tag. Here we go. Attack. So basically, I can't attack. It cancels, but I don't want to be able to attack while I'm up, 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 up. Uh... On interruption, we need to raise that attack as well. I forgot that. And we don't want to be able to interrupt a dodge with an attack. So let's block the attack while we're dodging. I probably, if, if I have time, should add some sort of sinking or attack sinking where, like, if it gets an enemy in a range, it'll actually sink you up to them to make sure you're attacking correctly, but I won't worry about that for now. Um, so, yeah, here's what we got our so far. We got dash and sprint. Oh, I don't want to dash into them, though. So if I had AoEs, boom, I can just go dashing around. And this is almost like mechanical prototype worthy feels good to run around and move do stuff yeah i mean i'm like i'm liking this already i'm liking the feel of this already so we um is it time zone well i mean my time zone's fine it's it i mean Italy, i i probably don't stream at the best time it's it's uh thanks uh let's see Karini, Karini, the anime? <laughs> is that it? Thank you. I very much appreciate it. And to you, uh, JDev, I think one thing is Twitch um, get, tends to get a lot more viewers as far as like game dev streamers. I'm not a fan of Twitch, really, about using it or the platform. That's just per personally, I'm not. Um, and I prefer YouTube. It's more convenient. But I, I'm, I, like, I'm okay with it. Um, like This is why I'm, I'm going to get more people. It's fine. Like, even if I just get a few hundred in my streams, I'm actually okay with that. Um, at least where I am now. But anyway. So. I said I just wanted to get dodge done, right? And I think I got it done. I actually do... I thought of something, and I want to make a quick... Uh, um, what? Hang on. I only, only want to be able to activate dodge if I'm grounded. Get ability character. So... Oops, falling. Oh, and same for attacking. Actually, attack, you do have the slam down attack if you're in the air. So, I can add that in. But, um... Yeah. I don't have a slam down attack right now, so... Maybe later. Boom! Um, so wait, one more second. Wait, I want to... Can't dash in the air, but I can dash on the ground. All right. Yeah. Attacking is done. We're not quite at 3 o'clock yet, but I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to try and wrap up in 10 minutes. You know what? I actually think um, 10 minutes is a uh -oh, uh, decent enough time for a break, so I will quickly – I'll probably take like a 10-minute break, and I'll be back to work on – get working on interaction with an inventory that'll be fun then start getting the menu uh working so yeah be back in 10 guys
And we back. Hello again. I returned. Uh, even if no one else has. Um, all right. Back to work. Let's go. All right. Interaction and item pickup time. Um, it's a blanket because I was getting cold. It's much more comfortable. All right. So now we just need items. Pretty simple. Um, yeah, I should probably be working on those menus now, too. Um, item menus, the first one should be the easiest one. Do you have item stuff I can import? Uh, let me see. Item icons. Uh, probably won't look exactly right, but... Mm -hmm. All right, let me just import a couple of things. This would be, be a good time to generate a lot of stuff um, with editor scripts. Just looking at some of the uh, ingredients, that's what is it. So, in Genshin items, we have items in Genshin Impact is the type of equipment that can be used in various ways. I, don't, I think that's backwards. Items presented as values as consumables, food, materials, and ingredients. Okay, so material, basically consumable, it would be consumables and food are like the main ones, and then those are composed of ingredients and materials. Okay. Well, that's pretty simple. Let's just make an item, which equipment would fall under items as well. What we'll do, uh, nah, they're going to be here anyway. Game framework. And now we introduce you to game systems, I believe. Game systems. Or, wait a minute. Rename. Game systems. You yeah, haven't worked on any game systems for this yet. You can realize really am behind. All right. Items. You use primary data asset, of course. Data set item. Okay. General. I'm getting a bit tired. Um. Maybe I'll go for another hour or two and then take a break and just work on my own time. We'll see. Hmm. That break really just kind of took it out of me, honestly. <laughs> um, but said I'd keep streaming, and I will. Food. Let me think. I guess generally I just want to work on items, so. Um. <laughs> right now. I don't want to necessarily tie anything down to specific classes because I want the, this to be highly editable or modifiable. So, sounds like someone's singing. Huh. All right, I think I know what I'm going to do. Sorry, I've been looking at stuff. So, for items, we got name. Let's make the name of a single line instead of a multi line. Icon. Naturally, we need an icon.
Well, at least something for stars, since star like rarity is a thing. Um, yeah, and rarity. Okay, items need to be dynamic, don't they? Or like instanced, because we need to be able to edit them, modify them, and then uh, rare have rarity and stuff. Hmm. Okay. I think is how I want to do that. All right. I think I'm getting into game data now. Let's start with the simple stuff. First, we need a we need an item actor. Whenever this saves. We'll change this to item data. Um, blueprint. Ah, interaction. But we need to make an interactable component first. All right, blueprint. We'll say pickup. But first, what we need is to back to the player, make a new ability for interaction. Interaction. Ability, interact, and a component, of course, BP, interact, double component, name, what is the thing we want to interact with, um, pretty simple, and on inter interact, default player, the player that interacts with this thing. Pretty simple. Not CP. Oh dear, definitely not CP. <laughs> okay. Um, sure it takes a while to save on an SSD. All right. Interactable. Um. No, no, no. Wrong one. Wrong one. Pick up. That's what the one that needs it. Interactable. Uh, item. There we go. Don't crash, don't crash, don't crash. It's gonna crash, ain't it? Uh, nope, there we go. Nope, never mind. I thought it. Now that, yeah, there we go. Um, let's see, static mesh. Because the thing is, this needs to have physics. Uh, or not physics. Oh, yeah. Uh, simulate physics. That's what I want. Uh, can you let me? I think I have to have an actual actor first. So let's say bread. Boom, perfect. Drop that pick up in here. That is a tiny loaf of bread. that thing all right and then of course a collision box for the interaction range um, I feel like it's I hear it raining outside but it doesn't say anything oh it is raining how about that how about that? Um, right. Let's see. Again, component sphere. 
interaction range. Um, all right, this will be the range of interactability. For debug purposes, we're going to make this not hidden in game. And give it to the player. <laughs> But I got to make, yeah, that's, let's be visible too. So there, there's our inter range of interactability. I think it needs to be a little bigger, 120. All right, now, on begin overlap and on end overlap. Cast to, no, no, not cast. Um, we get, see if it has the interactable actor, get. Component by class. Interact up There we go. No, no, no. Valid. No, no, no. Valid. No, no, no. Valid. There we go. All right. Um. So, the way it worked is you can, you have multiple interactables, right? Yeah, and then you have like one you can cycle through. So, set interact, no, no, add interactable, and remove interactable. Um, Registered interactables. And then update interactables. <laughs> Remove. Uh, contains that movie. Then remove that item. Pretty simple and run the update on adding if it does not contain then add it add unique uh, I don't think there's any reason we should ever add it more than once but still Pretty simple setup. No, no, no. Remove, remove. Oh, yeah, and HUD, of course. HUD, a new HUD layer for interactables. Um. HUD layer. Yeah, interactables. Wow. Yeah. Um, no, no. Context cast to ability interact. On interactable. Added, re removed. I'm gonna keep this to the same one just to save a lot of stuff. Oh yeah, I should add um general data to this so I can add it to a data lister. Simple enough. Uh, added. <laughs> if no one's here and they play uh, Genshin music, would anyone never know?
Here we go. Data lister. My favorite data lister. Which, uh, boy. Add a new data widget. Um. Data widget interactable. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate the feedback. All right. I'm getting sleepy. I may take a nap after this. Um, it's not gonna be a button because you won't click on it. I don't think. Maybe I should play Genshin after this. <laughs> Refresh my memory on some stuff. Um, let's go. For now, we'll just do a, a, um, ooh, a highlighted. That's true. I could uh, use the highlighted stuff to handle this. Someone's being loud outside the office. <laughs> Text. Someone's being really loud outside the office. Gosh, dang. Twenty-five offset ten offset twenty offset twenty on each, I suppose. There now, if I just uh, add those boys in, which it should be vertical and the scroll box, perfect. And we'll call it right interactables list. All right, I need to add an, uh, a remove by asset, don't I? Um, uh, boy, one second. All right, now, excuse, sorry about that. Personal business, just had a check in with someone. No, right. Um, creation. Man, it feels like it's been a lot longer. Um, let's see. Remove entry from list, but it needs to. Okay, what I need. To, uh, I'll think what I'll do is here for now. Um, Get entry index. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm going to work on a better way of handling this in in the framework where you can literally just remove an entry by asset, um, but by source asset. But in the meantime, interactable. Saved interactables. Yeah, and then index. Do 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 <laughs> All right. Let's go and add a few of these pickups and these breads. You gotta get that bread, gamers.
I wonder if, maybe I should clear the cache. I wonder if something got cached that's causing it to uh, take too long. Delay. Let's give it a second or two delay. And then get owner. Wah! Yeah, get owner character. Get controller. Cast to player controller. Um, probably should have a possession redirection. Um, yeah, that's fair. Um, that obviously since that was a game jam game, um, uh, uh, super like graphical optimization was not towards the top of my list, but uh, um, but yeah, that's fair. Um, I do want to focus more on on lower spec on uh lying for lower spec stuff uh let's see add hood please give me interactables and this is the context okay hang on um this should be cleared though <laughs> clear the list at the start There. Oh dear, there appears to be a problem. Something didn't get removed properly. That sucks, because now I don't know why. <laughs> Name text. Give me that text. Give me that text. Is what our game is looking like. And don't worry, the frame rate is better on my end. <laughs> um, oh, well, there's also no item type on there. But that, at least I know it's working. Um, the problem is, okay, if I remove it. Oh, why? Hmm. Don't know. As the drinker would say, don't know. Where'd they go? Hello? Fred? Where are you? You were around here a second ago. There they are. Did they fall through the map? No, they're there. Oh, there's... Okay. Um, I need to take off... <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'll probably... Uh, I don't know if I'm going to need playtesting, because it's mostly just for myself that I'm working on this. But, uh, yeah, thanks for sticking around, at least. Um, let's see. Physics actor. Okay. That's correct. I think I, I this is fine if it doesn't colli collide with pawns. That should be okay. Yeah. The problem is now it's adding crap and not removing it. What the day? All right, let's run through. On end overlap, correct. Remove interactable. Oh, not add. Interactable. That doesn't matter, but if it contains that, then remove it and set it to not added. Oi, oi. <laughs> I 
Maybe it's remove entry? Remove entry from list. Maybe I'll try something else. Uh, data widget. Don't, I was gonna say don't crash and it didn't, yay. I mean, yeah, that's true. Oop. Well, that's kind of true, at least. Not entirely luck-based, but that's definitely a factor for sure. All right, I think I got it fixed now. Fixed so well, it's not even showing. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um. Now, let's make some food to test it out. trying to think I'm not planning on implementing multiplayer just because obviously I don't have time but I should probably build this if I was which means I should put stuff like inventory in the player controller That takes too long to save. All right, um, so these are items, right? Let me refresh gameplay. Are you just looking through? Come on, pick up. Pick up something so I can see. Also, I had the interaction thing on the wrong side. That goes to like next to the player. About right there, I'd say. And it's a little too big. It's like they're just. What the heck is going on? They're just like. Are they are they actually dropping through the the ground? I, w wait. Okay, no. I thought I thought for a second they were dropping through the floor. That was weird. All right. Um. Well, okay. I know what you need to do. Uh, game systems items. No game data. No, I can't go in there though. Game data has got to be here. Um, items. Food. Alrighty. Bread. Bread. Trying to think of how I want to do this, and I'm wondering if I maybe I should stop it here and just spend some more time, kind of designing. I didn't quite get as much done as I wanted to, though. I mean, I got interaction working. That's good at least. Um, that's not quite enough, though. Uh, all right. Well, I know I have interaction working, so we'll we'll leave items there for now.
Let's make like a login loop login screen sort of thing. Mm, starting to get tired, but um, where's like the radio? I'm trying to find an image of the radio menu. Three thirty. What am I at? Two and a half hours. Um, oh, there's the radial menu, which I just realized I, I don't have time to set up a radial menu. So screw that. <sighs> you know what? I want to do a little more designing, like figuring out how I want to go about this stuff, and that's going to be boring. So I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the stream for there, work more on my off time. So, ugh, I guess I'm breaking now. Uh, thank you for everyone who uh, stuck around. Um, I'll be back again same time uh, tomorrow. 1, 1 p.m. Central Time, Central Standard Time, uh, America. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, I'm, that's, that's enough for day. I'm going to take a break and then get to designing and then get back to work on this. So, see ya.